Santiago. Oh, we up. Oh no, I'm so excited. <laughs> Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lachlan and this is going to be a reading vlog for the entire Dirty Air series. I will read the books and then talk to you guys about it. This is basically a F1 romance and if you're not familiar with F1, it's like these like race cars. I honestly don't know much about it. I know more about it now that I've read this book. This vlog will not contain any spoilers. I'm just going to talk about like my general like thoughts for the books. I just wanted to do kind of like a, a fun, you know, low-key vlog for the series. So if you're interested to see my thoughts on these books, then keep watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah, I finished this book like five minutes ago and oh my god. So this follows Maya and Noah. Noah is like the rival to Maya's brother. So it's like not brother's best friend, but brother's rival and it was just so freaking cute the writing is like pretty cheesy at times but i was laughing throughout this book like i don't know i just freaking loved it and it was probably like a three and a half star up until like the last 50 pages holy cow i'm obsessed like it was just so cute the epilogue was perfect the chapter before the epilogue Perfect. The only thing that I can say is that like one of the conflicts towards the end of the book did kind of resolve itself very easily, like a lot more easy than I was kind of expecting. I was expecting there to be more like of a blowout, but oh my god, you guys, this is so cute. I'm so excited to read the next book, chapter 42. I honestly just the last 100 pages, I have no words. It was so good. After finishing this, I just feel joy and happiness, love and adoration. It's just so perfect. So Lauren Asher also wrote The Vine Print and Terms and Conditions. The Dreamland Billionaire series is so good. And there's going to be a third book, but this series has four books and I'm just going to binge them in the next couple of days or week, however long it takes me, I don't know, we'll see. Oh my god, this is so cute. And so Maya, she also has a vlogging channel on YouTube, which was super cute and fun to see. Last thing I'll say about this one is that it is like slow going to like get started when you, where you like really get into the romance of it. Um, but what I really loved about it is that like, we get this like cool atmosphere for all the races and just reading about the races was just very intriguing to me and I love the setting and like, you know, the, the characters were traveling a lot for all of their different like races and stuff and it was just so cool and so if you pick it up, just know like the romance doesn't start immediately. Once it does, I mean, I'm telling you like it gets really, really spicy, like back to back spice at some points and yeah, so I'm really glad that I picked the series up and I freaking love this author so far. This is the third book that I've read from Lauren Asher and I have not been disappointed yet. So I'm going to pick up Collided and I'll update you guys whenever I start reading that. 
and oh God, I'm just so excited and I'm so happy this book was so good and I'm gonna go back and highlight some more I did some annotating but there's just some other stuff that I want to highlight and yeah I had a great time with this book hello guys so I ended up finishing collided and it was so good it ended up being a kind of a friends to lovers uh, secret relationship kind of thing definitely friends with benefits and it had the same timeline as throttled it was just like in a different point of view and normally I don't like it when books are like that but I really enjoyed this just because it did have like its own storyline it wasn't like the same as throttled no spoilers but one of my favorite moments was when Sophie friend zoned him his reaction was so cute like it was so sad but like not in a like a sad sad way I really really liked Liam I thought he was like such a cinnamon roll also Maya and Sophie's relationship was so is so so good like I just I'm obsessed with their relationship um, also I was reading reviews and I saw that people were saying that she felt like she was like a um, not like other girls and I, I don't agree with that I think she wears like tennis shoes and stuff which I can relate to like I don't wear heels I wear mostly tennis shoes and I don't I mean let me know if you've read this book if you feel like she was like that because I don't feel like that. Just because a girl wears like tennis shoes doesn't mean she's like not like other girls. You know what I mean? Like, but let, maybe I was like missing part of her personality. Like, what made her like that? I also think that we overuse that term a lot. Anyway, so back to Liam and uh, Sophie. So he also really like validated her feelings at one point in this book and I just really appreciated it. And then uh, Sophie's relationship with her dad was so, so cute. One thing I keep noticing in Lauren Asher's books is she uses this phrase and they tipped their head back and laughed. <laughs> she uses it a lot. It doesn't bother me, but I'm like, who does that? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of wish she would stop saying it because like, I don't feel like anybody actually does that, like tips their head back and laugh. Anyway, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this. I thought it was really cute. I will say like there were times where I just like kept picking up my phone. Um, I think it was like maybe in the middle-ish. Normally, there was a part, let me, yes, hold on. There was a section where I like barely tabbed anything at all and it was from page 213 to 228. I only have one, two, I only have four tabs in that section. No, I'm not saying that that section is particularly bad. I just remember being like, I haven't tabbed in a while and like normally I'm tabbing like crazy if I'm enjoying a book. Um, so I would probably give it four stars maybe four and a half because I think I did cry at the end I don't know I'm just like I cry at the end of most romance books if they're really really heartwarming I just get really happy and then cry like happy tears I definitely did that with throttled um but yeah so I am going to read wrecked next um I made the mistake of starting the for like I've read the epilogue before bed I made that mistake because the epilogue is so crazy and sad. Oh my god, I like couldn't sleep after I read it. So that was my mistake. But um, I'm really excited to read that. It follows Elena and Jax. Other than that, I couldn't tell you anything about it. Um, I'm really excited. So yeah, I am loving this. I'm also going to watch the um, F1. Uh... I'm also going to watch the Formula One uh, Netflix show to kind of get in the vibe because I just really want to watch it and I've heard that like after everyone reads the series they watch that show and um, I don't know anything about Formula One other than these books like I feel like I know a lot more. <laughs> I sound insane but anyway um, so I'm going to go to work today and I'm just wearing a sweater and some jeans and yeah, so I'm gonna go to work and then I'll come home and, you know, either watch Formula One or read Wrecked and I'm really excited. I'm like super obsessed. These books are like oh, so corny and cheesy, but I'm like here for it. And they're not that corny and cheesy. Like I feel like I, I keep saying that, but they're not like that 
I don't know. I just feel like I, I feel like I put that disclaimer sometimes on romance books if I don't feel like the writing is all that great because I don't want anyone's like hopes to be like hyped up, you know, but I'm really enjoying them and I really like how Lauren Asher writes her fictional men. Yep. <laughs> yep. So I'm having a great time with the series and I, um, anyway, so yeah, I'm going to work and I'll just think about Formula One all day. So wish me luck and I'll talk to you guys later. Hello guys. So I just got home from work and I stopped by Walgreens on the way home. And if you know me, then you know that means I got a new Squishmallow. So I'm going to show it to you. So before I change into my pajamas for the evening, um, I'm going to punch the Squishmallow because that's what we do. So this is uh, Wendy. And we're just going to... I'm ready to get wrecked. What do you think, Zelda? Pretending like I know what the hell is going on. But you know what? Like, I kind of do because of this series. Like, I am a scholar when it comes to Formula One, apparently. Obviously. Just kidding. Excuse me, but that is Noah and Santi, like right there, to the T, literally. <laughs> okay, so we stan Danny Rick. Max, however, absolutely not. Immediately no. I'm sorry, I know this has nothing to do with the series itself, but Formula One on Netflix is good. And 
yeah, I just hate Max so much. <laughs> Daddy? I mean, Danny? <laughs> oh my god, crack myself up. Hi guys, so I ended up finishing Wrecked last night and I have some thoughts. So again, no spoilers. This one is Enemies, Lovers, Found Family, Force Proximity, and it also has some anxiety representation. Like, I feel like the anxiety rep was pretty good. And we follow Elena and Jax, and Elena, at the beginning of the book, something happens to her. Like, the the beginning of the book starts off like very intense. She ends up having to like care for her grandma and she doesn't have a lot of money and she gets offered like this position to um well she actually owns her own business which is really cool. She has like a PR uh business that she runs and so she starts working for McCoy which is one of the Formula One teams and she becomes Jax's like pretty much babysitter because he cannot handle himself. He goes on like these benders and he just makes himself look really bad to um the press and like gets drunk and I don't know so he needs a babysitter to keep him in check and so she becomes that person and um the I remember thinking like in the beginning of the book they have a lot of back and forth banter that at first I was like oh this is so good but then like the banter and just in the beginning I was like okay it's the same stuff over and over again. It was like they weren't having actual conversations they were just being like snarky to each other which don't get me wrong I love a good snark session but um it was just like a lot. So I mostly enjoyed this book like in the in the middle of it was my absolute favorite. I feel like their relationship was 50-50 like they both gave and received like the same amount of support and love and Jax was like so sad and just like I don't know I really loved him and then he does things for her in this book that just were so freaking sweet I was just like so obsessed with him and they were just so freaking cute I predicted that oh, gosh I'm I'm conflicted on this one because I was absolutely loving it like it was probably at least a 4.5 star for me up until like around 350 pages and it just like took a turn that I kind of like I guess I wasn't expecting and Jax like fucks up he does something that I found to be really I don't know it it's honestly like not that big of a deal like most people probably don't even care but like, he uses some choice words that just, like, I just thought the way that he acted was so unnecessary, and I didn't like it, and then I need, so then I was like, okay, well, this boy better grovel his way back into her arms, and there was, like, no groveling that occurred, but I can't explain why, because it's a spoiler so most people will probably read this book and then understand why, like, like his point of view is understandable. Like I understand his point of view, absolutely. But I still think that there should have been more groveling. So yeah, the last like probably 100 pages brought this down to a four star for me, which is still a really good rating. <sighs> Gosh, I just wish that it had gone a little bit differently and I still love him. I just think that like, he was so stupid there for a minute and I needed him to grovel and we didn't get that and I I kind of see like 
I don't know, the author probably thought, like, it wasn't necessary because of, like, the circumstances. And I'm probably being cold-hearted bitch, but at the same time, like, I don't know. It was just, like, a lot. So I still really enjoyed it. Um, it's just probably not going to be my favorite from the series. Um, it was becoming my favorite there for, like, a while. Um, I was really enjoying it. Oh, also, this is random, but my friend Amanda sent me a book yesterday and I literally cried. So thank you so much, Amanda, for sending me Full Tilt. I'm really excited to read this. Let me know in the comments if you've read this. I heard it's so good. Um, I need to buy the second one so that I can read it because, yeah, it's a duet. And I've heard it's emotional and I'm so excited. Anyway, so I started Redeemed last night, you guys. <clears throat> my gosh, I'm only... 90 pages in. I'm on chapter 9. Y'all, this shit is so good. Oh my god. Fake dating gets me every single time, and I had no idea this was fake dating. Also, loving Chloe and Santiago. Like, there's just, there's a vibe that Santiago gives off that, like, out of all the guys, he seems so... I don't know, like, mature? I don't know. There's something about him that I, I'm just, like... He's giving Dreamland Billionaire vibes, which if you have read that series, so far there's only two books out, but oh my gosh, that series, like those men in that series are everything. And that's what Santiago is giving me. Also, just his name alone, Santiago. Oh, fuck me up. Oh my god. So yeah, this follows Chloe and Santiago and it's fake dating. And it starts off with like Chloe, so she's in and out of foster care. Her mother like deals with addiction. One thing, the only thing I have to say so far is that it says that she was taken away from child services. She was taken away from her mother by child services because her, her mother's boyfriend, I forget his name, it starts with an R I think, Ralph or something like that. And I just, I made a note in the book and I was like, for one, child services wouldn't be able to take away a child from its mother because of a shitty boyfriend. Even a judge, like, the boyfriend was like a drug dealer. But look, that's not how it works. <laughs> to be taken away from your mother, you, I mean, the mom has to literally, like, it what I just wish it had been explained a little bit more as to like why she was taken away from her mother because being a crappy mom and being addicted to drugs a lot of times is not enough to actually do anything like I don't know that's just like the way that the world works oh, unfortunately um and that's probably a negative outlook but it's a realistic one and so whenever I read that she was taken away from her mother because of like, her boyfriend who was a drug dealer, I was just kind of like, um, but what were the, like, give me the facts surrounding that, because, anyway, I'm probably overanalyzing, which is not shocking, but yeah, so far, I'm freaking obsessed, um, anyway, so she goes to, like, find her real dad, she takes a DNA test to find out who her dad is, because she has never met him, she doesn't know, her mom doesn't know, and then she finds out he's in, like, Italy or something like that. So she goes and, like, to meet him. And she ends up accidentally running into Santiago during the situation that, if you read it, you'll find out. And it's so good. Oh, my God. I am obsessed with fake dating. I'm obsessed with two people pretending that they're in a relationship. I'm only 90 pages in. And it's becoming a five-star prediction. Hopefully, like... I swear, Redeemed is the only Lauren Asher book that I've read where I did not like the ending. And don't get me wrong, the ending was good, but I just had wanted more groveling. If she can deliver, like, a, oh my god, I'm so excited for this book. And also, The Spine is Purple, my favorite color. Oh no, I'm so excited. Okay, I need to go to work. I'm literally running late. So, um, I'm gonna go to work. And I'll come home and hopefully read some of Redeemed. Okay, yeah, even on the back of the book it says, It started all with a birthday wish, some vodka, and an ancestry kit. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then something happens to Santiago in the beginning of the book. Um, very sad, but such a good book. Okay, 
Um, yeah, so I'll update you guys as I read Redeemed and... Okay. Hello, so I finished Redeemed and I loved it. But I have some thoughts. I have some good and some bad thoughts about it. So, mainly good. I think the last time I updated you guys, I kind of already gave you like a gist of what it's about, but it's fake dating and the guy falls first, that kind of thing. Santiago deals with depression in this book. And I thought the representation for that was pretty well done in my opinion. Um, I was so obsessed with this book up until about the halfway point. It started to get a little bit repetitive. The dialogue was a lot repetitive. Um, well, the dialogue in general was very repetitive, like I noticed that in the beginning of the book, but in the middle I was like, okay, it's getting a little repetitive. Now this was like almost 600, no, sorry, almost 500 pages. It was 470 pages, which is pretty long. I feel like it could have been like 100 pages shorter. Um, not the last 150 pages were my favorite. I don't think the last 150 pages should have been shortened, but I do think there was a plot line in this book that could have been completely removed. Um, and no spoilers, but there's a plot line like with her mother that I feel like added nothing to the book. Um, it was just kind of ridiculous in my opinion. So those are the two things that I have kind of an issue with, um, with like it started to feel a little bit repetitive and then that like plot line with the mother I just thought like it was just like not necessary because there were so many other things going on that I feel like were important to the story and the characters and then also Santiago can literally do no wrong in my book there's a point in this book where he like messes up you know it's like the point in the story where like the dudes you know do something stupid or whatever but in my opinion he wasn't like in the wrong I like the way that it resolved it got resolved like I really really love how it got resolved so I'm not, it doesn't like retract from my enjoyment of the book. But I just remember thinking like, why is she even mad at him? Like, I don't know. She, anyway, it was, it was really good. Santiago can literally do no wrong in my book. Um, the way that he like redeemed himself and got back in her good graces, so to speak. I don't know. I never use that term. I don't know why I just said that, but whatever. The way he like crawled back, no. Basically his apology was 10 out of 10, literally so good. All the things that he did for her were so, so good and I'm freaking obsessed. It was just so good. I think Lauren Asher, she can end books so freaking well, like she just knows how to do it. Something about it after I finish, I just feel like joy and happiness whenever I finish one of her books. So we have Throttled, Collided, Wrecked, Redeemed, I think my favorite. And I don't want to say this just because I just, it's the one I just read, but I really do think Redeemed is my favorite, followed by, I want to say Throttle, just because like the end of this book, oh my god, so good. And then probably Collided and then Wrecked. Um, so Redeemed, Throttled, Collided, Wrecked. And I have reasons for that, so if you've watched the whole vlog, then you know, you'll kind of see my reasoning for that. But, um... I love the series. Do I love it more than Dreamland Billionaires? No. But it's still so good. Um, I think most of the books were four stars for me um, or four and a half depending. And yeah, it's just a really fun series. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. So if you made it this far, you can leave a little Formula One emoji or if you don't have that, then you can just leave any kind of car emoji. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later in my next video.